emotionally, it's more through questions. Uh, a question that, that that rolls around in my mind when you're standing before somebody, just ask yourself, what do they require of me? So like, what do they require of me right now? And to sit in it, and it's not a matter of fixing the person, it's just answering the question, what do they need? You know, sometimes they need, you know, three easy, three easy steps. Sometimes they just need three easy minutes. Man of Mastery podcast, episode 35, part two with Chad Zook. Welcome back to the show where we are exploring actionable ways to restructure our mindset and compound common actions into remarkable results. The mission here is to learn from the success and failures of men and women applying this concept of mastery and its lifelong journey to many different areas of life. Related to growth in all areas of life, today Chad talks to us about his four pillars concept. It's a great reminder that we tend to hide in our strengths and neglect our weaknesses. When we do that, we can overweight, we get out of balance, and ultimately it undermines and affects all areas of life, our pursuit of meaning, purpose, and impedes that growth. This is a great time to think about that in context of moving through the last bit of 2019 and into 2020. So as you think about goals for 2020 and really accelerating into the new year, here's a reminder about an event coming up in June called Relentless MV. This is something we heard about from Laval St. Germain and Patrick Sweeney, the fear guru. John Kane and his team at Relentless MV put on this event for people who are really dedicated to the pursuit of self-improvement and growth right up our alley. The other thing that sounds pretty interesting about this one is it's a little different, maybe growth context to what I've done this year and what I've talked about pretty often. This one's set in Martha's Vineyard. So this isn't rolling around in the mud in an overnight boot camp. This is an intimate setting to learn from some of the most inspiring minds in the world and then kick back in the evening with a, with a dinner reception. So as far as I know, Patrick Sweeney is on tap to be there again this year, perhaps Laval again. And John and the Relentless team have just announced Ryan Holiday as a keynote for 2020. You may know Ryan as the author of Ego is the Enemy, Obstacle is the Way, and his latest Stillness is the Key. John and the Relentless MV team organized a 20% group discount for Man of Mastery as a community, friends, family, anybody who wants to take advantage of that, just get in touch with them at relentlessmv.com. With Ryan Holiday added as a keynote, this one's sure to sell out. So jump in there fast. Join Patrick Sweeney, the fear guru, Ryan Holiday, and me in Martha's Vineyard, June 2020, Relentless MV. All right, guys, with that being said, let's jump into episode 35 with Chad Zook. The four pillars, intellectual, physical, spiritual, and relational growth. You know, I was listening to one of your podcasts, the Gratitude and Gravy podcast uh, that released around Thanksgiving, and you had mentioned BHAGs and big, hairy, audacious goals. What are some What are some goals that you have for 2020? It's It's an interesting one. I mean, I th- I'm a big, big believer in in trying to set scary goals, and mm-hmm. you know, even better when when you have some kind of forum like this to just you know make them public and. and use that as a way to hold yourself accountable or you throw them on Facebook or you tell your family, friends, whatever it is. Uh, I, I'd say a couple things. So one is I, I've had, I mean, I just had a very, very, very fortunate year and I've had a great opportunity to do some really fun stuff. Mm-hmm. And there's some stuff that I, I went out to, to do that just for one reason or another couldn't, couldn't happen uh, mm-hmm. or didn't happen the way we imagined or maybe happened even better in other ways. So, I'll, I'll pick one, which is in, in the summer, my son and I went with a group and the intention was to camp and spend some time in the mountains for a week and to hike to the summit of Mount Whitney, which is the tallest peak in the lower 48. Um, so it's, it's uh, you know, done as, a, as an out and back day hike. It is quite a long way. I think it's, it's 22 miles and it goes up to over 14,000 feet. Wow. So, you know, it's going to be a fairly audacious goal, especially, um, with, you know, with an 11 year old in tow. Mm-hmm. 
with the amount of snow California got last winter, we went up as far as we could. I don't know, maybe 10,500 feet. And that was it. You had to have, you know, people were going up past that with crampons, ice axe, mm -hmm. um, stuff like that. So we, we went as far as we could, couldn't make a run at the summit. So that's back on the list for 2020 for sure. But cool. nonetheless, we had an amazing time just unplugging and turned out to be a bit of a, you know, talk, talk kind of about manhood, sort of a rite of passage event for my son. Mm -hmm. So it, it turned out to be, um, amazing in ways that, uh, that we didn't anticipate, but I'd love to go back and, you know, go after that particular goal this year. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that one to me, you know, embodies some, some physical stuff. It embodies sort of the nature and, and the spirituality of that. And, Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of things, you know, more than just, Hey, I want to you know, tick this uh, summit off my list. Um, but the other thing I, I'd say is, is I go back to my statement that the, the physical realm is, is probably a comfortable place for a lot of guys to focus. Right. So, you know, I'd, I'd like to, to lean back into some other areas that are not as, as comfortable for me, you know, sort of embrace the, the discomfort. Um, not to say that the a service mindset is, is, uncomfortable to me, but it, it's probably just one that I have not focused on as much in the past. Um, I think I did mention that I, uh, I spent some time uh, in 2018 and a bit of 2019 doing burpees to raise money and awareness for the Courage Foundation and their burpees for vets. Uh, this is for vets with PTS. So mm -hmm. I think I'm at about 21,000 burpees, which for me, Seems pretty good. I mean, there's some wow. guys that are into the hundreds of thousands now that are in the same crew of people doing it. But that, I mean, that's just, it's just super powerful to have a reason like that, that, that you're yeah. going after something. Um, or even as, as simple as my wife and my son and I recently went and packed meals at the local food bank. That oh, it's great. People in need. So um, things like that are just so rewarding that, I think I often get caught up in so much of this other stuff, um, mm -hmm. you know, big goals, big trips, big, you know, big, big mountains and things like that, that just bring it back to the simple local service oriented things that are so rewarding and, and hopefully important to other people as well. So yeah, I, I'm going to do some of that in 2020 for sure. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and I would just say kudos to you. I, I know that, uh, you going out and doing the races with your son, that's a big deal. And man, he's going to remember that forever. And I think it's fantastic. And, uh, and it sounds like he's on the track to surpass anything that you're doing too. If he's, if he's doing what he's doing at 11, going to the, uh, the, is it worlds or the nationals for Spartan? Yeah, for sure. He's way ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt about it. I'm, I'm happy to admit it. I think his parents, that's, that's kind of the goal anyway. But it yeah, is. this this coming, uh, I don't know when we'll air this, but uh, here in December, he is, he's qualified for the uh, Spartan Kids World Championship. Uh, and it run, they split it up now. It runs for him the 10, 11 age category. So he's, uh, he's at the older end of 11. He's been training hard. He, get, he went out there and got crushed last year. Mm -hmm. So he's used that to fuel himself and, uh, and work, on his, work on his physical training, work on his mindset training. And uh, mm -hmm. And he's he's ready, so we'll see how it goes. No, oh, that's great. He's gonna do he's gonna do awesome, and he's got a good training partner too. So you guys are both gonna kill it. It's oh, gonna be thanks. awesome. Thanks, man. So, yeah, you know, you're talking about service and that. It's interesting how sometimes in life we need to go out and look for opportunities to serve, and then sometimes opportunities just stare us right in the face. And you know, we've sought some of the same opportunities that you have, and going out, you know, serving people and who, uh, you know, in, in a way that's, that you're not going to get anything in return. There's just something really special about that. And so my wife had kidney disease a few years ago and she ended up, uh, going on dialysis and doing all of that. So that was one of those instances where I was put in a situation to where, you know, <laughs> the opportunity gave me, it was presented to me meaning, you know, caring for her and doing the things around the house that she couldn't do and, and to chip in to do honestly anything. So sometimes we have to go out and find ways to serve. And sometimes life just presents them naturally. And I'm thankful that she's not on dialysis anymore. She had a kidney transplant. She's doing fantastic. And, you know, so things are going great, but there was a season there that, that required a lot of serving. 
you know, and it, to me, it was, it was a, it was a joy to do it. I mean, it, it was incredibly painful to, to go through that with her and to see her do that. But it was a joy to me to be able to serve her because she spent, you know, we've been married for 26 years now and she's spent so many years serving myself or others. So it was just a small thing that I could do to give back to her. Um, and, and just to, to be the man that I know that I'm supposed to be and that I could be to honor her in that. So. Well, nice job. She's, uh, she's lucky to have you Chad and I'm glad to hear she's doing better. Um, I, you know, I'd also say yeah, if you're, if you're thinking about your own 2020 goals, uh, starting the, the podcast, you know, the, yeah. the new man podcast, this is, believe me, and, and you know, some of this already is it takes a lot of work. And mm -hmm. you're, you know, you're doing this on a, on a weekly or multi, multi times a week sort of cadence mm -hmm. to try to get something useful kind of out into the ether. And, um, and, and really it's, it's for, you know, asking nothing in return. You're trying to provide something that can be of value that you have to offer that you've learned and you want to share. And right. it's, it's a considerable effort that goes into that service. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, kudos for, for doing that and, and committing Thanks, for, to get that out there. Um, that that's an awesome thing in itself. I appreciate that. Yeah. It's, it's definitely a pretty steep learning curve. You know, uh, talking is not a difficult thing, but recorded conversations and all of the administration that goes on before and after steep learning curve, but it's worth it. Yeah. A conversations lot of, a lot of like this. A lot of behind the scenes stuff, but yeah, exactly. You get to meet some really cool people and, and you're going to kill it. Thanks, bro. Yeah. So, um, I wanted to just give you opportunity. You know, we had kind of talked about the pillars of my work or were there questions that you wanted to ask about, about those pillars or something you wanted to say about those, about the intellectual growth, emotional, emotional side of things, spiritual side of things or relational side of things. Yeah, no, I mean, I think just, just in terms of, of understanding a little bit more about how you're applying those principles and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you've, you've had a chance to listen to some of my material and, and kind mm -hmm. of how I'm headed. So it's really just a chance to, uh, to ask you to share a little bit more and, and maybe, you know, from what you've heard of me taking the way you approach things, which is a little different, um, you know, any, any advice you've got from, for me uh, mm -hmm. or how I might apply some of your pillars and what I'm doing. Yeah. So the intellectual side of things, to me, I, uh, this is, this has been a discipline that it was really difficult when I started in this journey, uh, because I, it doesn't come naturally to me. So for me, uh, the intellectual side of things, I try to surround myself with, with people who are smarter than me. I, I, I'm to the point now where I want to read, and this would be maybe something that would be helpful for you. A lot of times we read things that we're comfortable with and that way, you know, our brain isn't challenged. It's just kind of like that predictable rut and it's like, Oh, okay. And it makes it easy. But yet to grow intellectually, I always want to read five to 10% above my current reading level. Hmm, so okay. I never grew up reading biographies. I'm not a science fiction reader or fantasy reader. This is not my thing, but biographies, uh, you know, they're, they're challenging the way that, that you read it. Some people may think it's boring, but, uh, I don't, I think it's fascinating. There's nuggets there to be, you know, to be gathered. Um, I read a couple of books on Theodore Roosevelt, which, you know, is, is well studied through history. Got a couple of books on Abraham Lincoln on the shelf right now. These will be challenging read. And I still have another, uh, Roosevelt book. Those are challenging reads, you know, it takes time. There's a discipline aspect of it. And yet these are the types of things that I want to get into. And, and even way of the seal, I knew that I would disagree with the book, but I knew it by that challenge that it would spur me intellectually and in other areas too. But I knew there was something valuable there. So I knew that I would disagree with some of the stuff, but yet I walked into it anyway. Hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. And I'm I appreciate reading, that. That's a, that's a really good point to not only do things that are, or challenging to us, maybe intellectually, but be willing to maybe consume something that we, we know is not really in agreement with us, but, you know, get, get another perspective on it. And right. Consider that. 
Yeah. And, and I'm reading Thoreau right now. I'm reading Walden and I don't agree with some of his theological viewpoints, but yet some of the other things that he says makes absolute sense. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Okay. And uh, so that's just another, you know, another perspective. Uh, I like fun reads too. Don't get me wrong. But uh, so not everything is like that, but uh, that's one aspect of it. Uh, podcasts that I may listen to. Uh, I listen to fresh air has stuff from uh, had, I've been listening to a series I think it, I think it was from Stanford. So just trying to spur me intellectually, uh, you know, I've been out of, of college for years now and I went to seminary myself and I've been out of seminary for years. So it, to me, I have to maintain the discipline to, to grow intellectually, emotionally. It's more through questions, uh, a question that, that I, that, that rolls around in my mind and the guys that I, I coach and mentor, this is a question that always comes up pretty quickly uh, when people want, or when guys specifically want to know, Hey, w- what should I do? And I don't know how to address my wife or my kids or my friends. I just don't know what to do. And just ask when you're standing before somebody, just ask yourself uh, the question, what do they require of me? So like, what do they require of me right now? And when you do that, and especially when that's accompanied with the breathing things that we've talked about and observing anxiety and the tendency for us to pull away because maybe we're afraid of the difficult conversation, we're, we're afraid of emoting or, or we're just afraid that, man, we may get in over our head where I may have to have a conversation that I am absolutely ill-equipped for. But yet to sit in it, and it's not a matter of, of fixing the person. It's just answering the question. What do they need? You know, sometimes they need, you know, three easy, three easy steps. Sometimes they just need three easy minutes. Mm. Yeah. I like that. It, it really goes back to that, to that theme more broadly of, of considering different perspective and, and mm-hmm. also trying to take ourselves out of the center of the universe a little bit and not right. thinking about ourselves so much as, as what, what can I do here to be of service? Yeah, absolutely. Right. And yeah, absolutely. And the the physical side of it. So there's, it's interesting because the emotional side and the relational side go hand in hand. So I kind of, those to me, those pillars are, are really interwoven. I would say physical, physical strength. I don't have to really talk about much about that with you because you're already doing this. Uh, but but it is it is putting your your body in situations to where there's there's movements and you're stressing your body to develop your body. The couch is way too comfortable. The chair is way too comfortable. The bed is way too comfortable. And if if left to our own devices, we will most of us anyway will become really inherently lazy and out of shape. And every part of our of our body, our physical body is is directly connected to our spiritual self and also the emotional and the relational self. So if you're in a slump in any one of these areas, it's affecting all of these areas. So that's why I'm a huge proponent of, oh, don't just spend, I'm spending this season where I'm, I'm just working on the intellectual side. If you, if you neglect the others, you're not going to see success in your life, success in your relationships, um, you know, just more purpose, more meaning. It's just not going to happen. So you have to have growth in all these areas, not perfection, but growth. So you're, you're taking steps in these areas. So the physical side of it, I know that's a big part of your work. I'm not going to camp out on that too much, but the, the spiritual side of it there too is, is understanding for me and in my perspective as being a Christian man is that first I'm serving God and then I'm serving people. So it's every man wants to be great. And the way to be great is by is, is the way to find greatness is in the service to others and service to God. So spiritually, again, all of these things are connected. I believe that uh, one thing that I'm passionate about with my work is, is the fact that Christian men are not known as men who are physically fit. They're instead, they fit the stereotype of the guy who's, you know, who, who's sitting at the table, he's already had seconds, he's waiting for dessert, his, his wife is, 
uh, serving him, doing all these things. And he's kind of like, you know, just kind of just going through life and he, he's generally tired. He's not taking care of himself physically. And yet to me, I want to break that stereotype uh, for the men that, that I'm around or that I have the opportunity of leading. I, I want to challenge them to do things physically. That way they, again, they break that stereotype and it affects every part of your life. Yeah. I'm completely on, on that program. It's, it's, it is very much interwoven synergistic. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I guess the cliche would be well-rounded, but I'm completely in agreement that, that there are definitely times that I, uh, I overweight the physical uh, mm. element uh, myself. And, and again, that's, that's a, uh, that's a comfort area, right. but yeah, we really, we need to develop in, in all these areas. And I, I'm, I would, my son and I just had this conversation the other day. I think we're, we're definitely spiritual, I would say. Mm-hmm. less so than organized religion. But, okay. how, you know, however, however you tie that back, I think, I think we could both tie it back to uh, if we're neglecting applying our unique talents, uh, fulfilling or, or working towards our unique offering or purpose in the world, then, then we're, you know, we're falling short. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what, it, you know, we, we'd said at the onset of the, of the recording that, is really what the, these pillars, that's what they help support is, is purpose in a man and identity as a man and the calling and the destiny and all of those things. So these pillars help reinforce that. And if, if, if one of these pillars is cracking or is just not where it needs to be, you feel it in every other area, you know, just, you know, real life example, if I'm not emotionally connected to my wife, I'm probably not going to be serving her very well. Instead, I'm going to be avoiding her. Right. Right. You know, as soon as, as soon as there becomes a, a difficult conversation or an emotional conversation, if I disconnect in that moment, I'm not serving her well. I'm going to withdraw and I'm going to, Oh, okay. I'm going to go in the other room and, and I'm just not doing what I ought to do. And I think you know, in one of the pillars that I have as well is relational integrity is being honest on the outside about what's going on on the inside. And there's a big aspect of men that they, that don't have the freedom or the tools to be able to do that. So, so men, and I put myself in this category too, we tend to hide in our strengths. You know, if we're a carpenter, we talk about work and what we do, we work with our hands and what we build and what we can build and where we're going and all these things. Uh, if it's working out, we talk about, well, these are my gains or I, I, I did this and I did, you know, whatever it is. I mean, there, there's obviously there, there's a whole pile of things that we could kind of stack up as, as things that are actually used to avoid what we're supposed to do as men. So we, we, what we use as a crutch instead of actually embracing the issue. So uh, all that to say that these to me are so connected. And, and when I'm growing in these areas, I'm, I'm, I'm serving people better, better in my sphere. I'm a better neighbor. I'm a better friend. Uh, I'm a better podcast host. <laughs> I mean, not just him. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a better son. I'm a better father. I'm a better husband. You know, uh, when I'm growing in these areas and if I'm not growing in these areas and I'm not taking care of myself, I'm going to feel it and, and it's going to show through in the rest of my life as well. So I'm sure that's probably not that different, uh, in everybody else's life too. So, yeah, I think we're all, we're all pretty similar in that if, if we're overweighted or unbalanced, um, or, or just, you know, completely inattentive across the board, it shows through in, in every area. Right. So as we wind this up, I want to just, if I could ask you a couple questions and then if you have any questions for me, uh, I'll answer those too, for sure. sure. But what does it take to be a man? Yeah. I mean, for me, I, I I'm sure it's a little different for everybody and, and go back to, everybody having some unique way to make their own impact. Mm-hmm. But for me, you know, a lot of it is about, about fatherhood. 
Mm. So, you know, you mentioned coming from, from a broken home and, and my, you know, my family, my, my parents divorced. It was the other way around. Um, mm -hmm. My mom stuck around to, to raise me and my brother. So for me, the fatherhood focus is, mm. is about, you know, it's, it's not all negative, right? It's, it's repeating and, and carrying forward the positive, mm -hmm. but breaking, breaking the negative patterns and reinventing, right. which mm. some of that goes back to the mindset thing, you know, being, does. being aware, not just taking our view of the world and our mindset and mm -hmm. the things that got ingrained by uh, behaviors or learned behaviors, you know, not just taking those things for granted, really being able to reflect on why we think the way we do, why we have the assumptions we make, you know, why we conduct ourselves the way we do. Um, you know, maybe that's emotionally, maybe mm -hmm. it's the way that you think your relationship should work, whatever mm -hmm. that might be. Uh, yeah. To me, it's the, that manhood component is you know, certainly, certainly as a husband, but having, having a son and, and believing that one of the best things we can do is, is leaving the world better off. And, and certainly a big component of that is, is through our children. Mm -hmm. Fatherhood to me is, is what, one of the biggest things about being a man is all about. Yeah, that is so powerful. I, I literally had a conversation on Sunday night with my son and we were talking about, you know, he was talking about some things in his life and goals and stuff, and he's engaged and looking at his future. He's 23, you know, so it's just, it's exciting. And I'm, I'm observing all this and he's kind of, he's saying, Hey, well, I'm going to do this. And this is what uh, the decisions that we're going to make and all of this. And, and, you know, I kind of stopped and I, it was, it was very surreal actually, Michael, because I'm just kind of sitting there listening. And I was like, wow, this is incredible, you know? And, but I didn't say a lot. So I had to, I, I let him talk. And then at the end I clarified it. And I said, I just want you to know, I wasn't threatened by anything that you said at all. Uh, because he was talking about way things he would do things differently. And it's not the way that my wife and I have done it. And I said, I'm not threatened by what you said at all. I said, it excites me because I believe that one of my responsibilities as a dad is to see you go further. And I said, it would bring so much joy in my life knowing that my son and that my, you know, my son and, and my daughter-in-law and my grandkids and my daughter and, you know, hopefully a son-in-law and, and kids through, uh, through my daughter and years to come. I'm like, it would just bring so much joy to know that they don't have to walk and live with all the baggage that I did. Yeah, that that's super cool. That's a great story. Really powerful that you're able to step back and, and say, hey, you know, you're looking at this a different way than, than I have, and I'm okay with that. And I, mm -hmm. I would say, you know, maybe even to take that a step further, this is something a coach of mine challenged me on recently is, is having the self-awareness to challenge your, your own routines or your own mm -hmm. uh, maybe way of doing things. So I think the example she had was, you know, maybe you and your wife, have always done something a certain way. I, I don't know, make up a silly, silly example. Like, you know, I cook and, and you do the dishes mm -hmm. or something like that. You know, maybe you've fallen into some routine without ever even talking about it by design, you mm -hmm. know, and, and there's an always nothing is static, right? There's always opportunity to go back and, and go like, is this working for you? I'm not sure if it's working for me. <laughs> you know, maybe right. we redesign the way we look at something in life. Yeah, that's gold. That is gold. Cool. Thanks for sharing that. Absolutely. So who has made the biggest impact on you as a man? Yeah, it's, it's uh, that's a tough one too, right? Um, I'll, well, I'll say, I'll say a couple things. So my son, um, we gave him uh, his middle name after my, uh, my grandfather mm -hmm. who, um, you know, I talked about veterans off air before, before we got on mm -hmm. my dad's generation, my dad served my uh, grandparents on, on both sides, both, uh, both grandfathers were involved in the world war II era. And, uh, so, so yeah, my, uh, it's kind of a, kind of a cool quirky little story. My, my grandpa that, uh, I, I called Poppy for, for whatever reason, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Um, his, uh, everybody called him Tony. His name was Tony. Okay. And then, uh, when my wife and I got, got married. My wife grew up in Mexico. We had a wedding in Mexico. So my, my grandpa went to get his passport to, to come to our wedding in Mexico. So he goes to find his birth certificate, which I'm sure he hadn't looked at in decades. Finally pulls it out, goes to get his passport. 
And you know, he'd been called Tony because he thought his name was Anthony. And when he looks at his birth certificate, he had a very Italian name. It wasn't Anthony. It was Antonino. Really? Um, he never knew. So we thought that was not only a cool story, but a, a cool way to honor this, this man that was a, a really big influence on me growing up. And so uh, my son's middle name is, is Antonino. Right on. That is great. Yeah. But, that, you know, I, is... I'd also say, so my, my family is Irish and Italian. My mom's side of the family is, is Italian, who mm -hmm. are certainly known for strong women. And my right. wife being, being Mexican, this is uh, also a strong uh, sort of matricentral sort of culture. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think as, as men, one of the things we can, can, can do to be strong is to admit, uh, admit our weaknesses or, you know, mm -hmm. admit where, where others are stronger. And, uh, you know, strong women have a, have a really important role in our lives too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. That is very well said. So as I know we're coming up to a hard stop now, but is there any way you could just kind of shoot out the top three books that you think that every man should read? Yeah. And, and I'm actually, uh, I'm doing okay on time. So if you want to keep going okay. a little bit, I'm, cool. I'm good with that too. Uh, I had something that, that pushed back a little bit, but awesome. um, yeah, I think you, you'd asked me uh, previously and some stuff we exchanged about books and, and or places that, that people should visit that every man should visit. So mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll do a combo. So I mentioned earlier Ryan Holiday and, and The Obstacle is the Way. So mm -hmm. that's actually a trilogy. The Obstacle is the Way, Ego is the Enemy, and mm -hmm. his newest is called Stillness is the Key. So I love the first two. I've got the, the third one sitting here to read. But um, to me, they're, they're quick. They're short reads. He pulls a lot of stoicism into them and mm -hmm. it embraces that whole concept of uh, – of, you know, not avoiding the obstacles, expecting them, preparing for them, and using them to strengthen us, mm -hmm. uh, while having you know, ego as the enemy, having having a humble approach to things. And mm -hmm. then, cool. um, uh, you know, you know, living in, in the in the physical challenge realm, David Goggins is that's you know, it's a hard individual, right? But oh, um, but uh, I'll take it back uh, a generation or two to uh, Victor Frankel, Man's Search mm -hmm. for Meaning. Uh, I mean, the, the people that went through what he went through and, and particularly survivors of the Holocaust, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it doesn't get any harder than that. And, and that is an incredible book to, uh, to read and be inspired by if, if you have the chance or if you haven't. Yeah. And then, um, <clears throat> so this is where I'll throw a hybrid in on, on the travel side of things rather than a third mm -hmm. book is, is um, you know, a lot, a lot of people just get either comfortable or isolated and and I think there's just so much value in traveling internationally, particularly places that maybe going in seem unfamiliar or uncomfortable because they just really not only break your, some things about your worldview and open your mind in new ways, mm -hmm. which can be an incredible education. But mm -hmm. then to me, they also make you come home maybe you know, hopefully with some, some ideas you're bringing back of new things you've embraced but they also really make you appreciate what you have when you do come home, whether mm -hmm. it's, whether it's freedom, you know, whether it's um, a toilet you can sit on rather than squat over <laughs> you know, clean water. I mean, sometimes it's the simple things and getting out and seeing the world and seeing how it is for other people in other places, um, better or worse is, is really inspiring and educational. Yeah, it is. I've had the opportunity to go to several places in the world, whether it was through, uh, my time in service. So getting to go to see just a bunch of different cultures and, in, in, you know, in really in an odd way, because sometimes it would be two weeks apart. So you would go to Italy, which has a defined culture. And, uh, and then, you know, that you just drop into France, which is completely, it, I mean, it's Europe, but it's not the same. Right, so, right. you know, and then just a couple of weeks later, you know, then you may, you know, we end up going into Haifa, Israel. You talk about culture shock, you right. know, and then going into Jerusalem and then seeing, seeing all that. So I've had the opportunity to go to Jerusalem a couple of times and, and Bethlehem. And it just, it's just so surreal. And sometimes it's only separated by like two weeks. So, so you, you work really, really hard and then you pull into port for a couple of days and you're like, what in the world? You know, it's just a totally different experience, but it does shape your worldview. It absolutely does. Uh, 
it just, it shapes so much of the way that you see the world and really to gain a better understanding for the, for what we have in this country. I mean, for me, that's one of the shocking things and the opportunities I've had to, to leave the, the country over the last couple of years was to do missions work in the Dominican Republic. And while it is an island paradise in some, in some areas, it's clearly not in others. And it's still a third world country. So, so yeah, I, I totally understand the value of, of seeing things outside of your, your context and culture. I mean, that's, that's another aspect of a growth mindset, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose it probably is. I, um, that's, that's super cool that you're, you're doing mission work. I, I did a podcast with a buddy of mine a while ago who started doing missions to Brazil. Hmm. And he, he was not a missions kind of guy. He's the, first, mm-hmm. he's the first guy to say it, but uh, he he's brought back some really interesting stuff. Some of it is is just about the power of again power of service of mm-hmm. you know we are there for for no reason other than to try to make it a better day for who we interact with. Right. That's it. Right. We're not here for anything. We're not here to ask anything. We're just mm-hmm. here to do that. And then he he thought he could bring sort of corporate world lessons and organization to to this whole this whole process, which in some ways probably works in other ways doesn't because you know, you're just dealing with, you're dealing with unknowns. You can't set a schedule, uh, things like that. So he's probably bought, he's brought more back to the business world lessons. He's learned, he's he's written a paper about it, Mm -hmm. Uh, things he's learned on his mission that he's applying now in his his professional world. So it's a, you know, probably another good example of, uh, of, you know, call it, call it growth mindset, call it service mindset going out into the world in that way enriches us in ways that we can't even foresee. Yeah, absolutely. And we all, you know, we, we all just tend to get stuck in our own nine to five kind of life and what we do and our normal rhythms. And it's good to shock the system. I mean, just as it's good to shock the system physically and go out and, you know, hammer out 15 more burpees than you've ever done to shock the system. uh, It's good and grow in that area. I'm saying that for you. I hate burpees, but you know, for you, <laughs> 15 more. Um, I, I have a love hate relationship with burpees. I know they're incredibly good. So I love them for that, but I hate them because well, they're burpees, but still you get it. <laughs> yeah. I, I also have a love hate relationship, except that I'm not sure if there's any love in it. Just, uh, <laughs> I, I don't like them, but I, yeah, I, I agree. They're, they're great for you. you yeah. And you know, the, the travel thing, um, I mean, I think this is a really cool story. So I'll just share it with you. I, I was never necessarily inspired to travel internationally mm-hmm. until I had a, a roommate from New Zealand and this guy had, you know, he just had this wonderful book of pictures just back in the, the physical photo day. Right. So he had a photo mm-hmm. album of all these places he had been and we were, you know, we were like in our early twenties. It's like, well, how'd you go to all these places? So he goes, well, look, you know, I, I grew up on in this country, which is two main islands that are pretty much in the middle of nowhere. And mm-hmm. as it is, not only are we isolated geographically, but we're pretty small. We're like three or 4 million people globally. And a, and a bunch of those live over overseas for, for work and whatnot. So we're very self-aware as a culture that there's a real danger of becoming isolated and mm-hmm. just having this homogenous worldview. So mm-hmm. they view school as one element of their education for their kids. But another element is like kicking them out of the nest. Like they, they call it, I think, overseas expedition. So hmm. part of it is whether it's after high school or it's after university or whatever it is, you know, get a backpack, travel Europe, travel hmm. Asia, go to, go to Africa, like get out somewhere for a few months and, you know, get somewhere you don't understand the language, just get places you've never seen that are going to blow your mind. Mm-hmm. And, and they really embrace it as, as part of their educational process. So, I, I got inspired by that. I, I embraced that. And that was, that was something that uh, kicked me off on seven months of around the world travel that, uh, that blew my mind as, as a kid in his twenties and in ways mm-hmm. that uh, I hope I can maybe impart on my son, but, but it's also, it's left with me places that I want to take him to when mm-hmm. he's a little bit older and, and share that with him directly. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. We, we made the choice, um, to have my son participate in a gap year. So he spent nine months in the Dominican after high school. And that was really formative for him. 
So living immersive, you know, in the, in the culture, studying Spanish, uh, studying, you know, it was college level classes, but yet every Friday they were out and actually doing missions work. And they were all assigned to different tasks. Uh, some were orphanages, some were farms. I, I mean, a lot of times he, what he did was he was helping, uh, uh, a local missionary, an American who's now a localized missionary there and in a village and basically just clearing this land so they can expand the village and so they can add other things to help build up the infrastructure of this little village. So he, and it was a lot of sweat equity, man. I mean, in the DR and he's, you know, using just hand equipment to clear all sorts of just, I got to see it afterward, just, you know, acres uh, of clearing by hand just so somebody else can come in the future and lay a foundation for, for other work that's going to help our infrastructure. So yeah, that was a, a really good thing that, that we really sat on and we, we knew that that would be valuable for him. Oh yeah. That's an amazing gift that you've given him. And yeah, I'm, I'm sure that involves some hard days that aren't always happy moments, but you mm -hmm. will look back on that with stories and, Mm -hmm. and appreciate it and it's such a unique experience maybe he's walked away with some language skills uh, mm -hmm. that, that's incredible yeah yeah he has he has and uh so he's the he's the only one in the family who can speak some spanish mine <laughs> mine is mine is <laughs> marginal at best even after going there to spanish-speaking countries or, or times in, in service when i went to puerto rico trying to pick up something it's like wow i I had nothing to offer. Uh, I was the clueless American and everybody knew it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, and, and it kind of, it goes back to, to this mindset thing again. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm learning this, a lot of this stuff when I'm damn near 50, but right. there, there's real physiology to, to the brain's adaptability when we're, when yes. we're, when we're younger, you know, that neuroplasticity that uh, it's, it's fantastic if we can pick this stuff up challenge ourselves in all these different ways earlier in life. And maybe mm -hmm. as parents, that means we pass it on to our kids or our grandchildren to help them, you know, with a, with a bit of a kickstart that, that will be easier for them to learn earlier in life than it is for us later in life. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, today's been a, a great conversation and I have a feeling that you and I could probably talk for hours more and just kind of dig and take a whole different realm and maybe that'll be, uh, round two or three of, uh, of, of a podcast that we'll share again like this one. But I just want to give you an, an opportunity. Is there any new work that, that you would like to, uh, to talk about? I know that you have some coaching or something, right? That you're being prepared to be a coach. Yeah, no, I appreciate the opportunity, Chad, to, to give that a bit of a plug. And uh, I don't want to take too much of your time. So yeah, maybe, maybe we'll do this again down the road, but, um, yeah, you know, the unbeatable mind stuff has, has been one significant influence on some of some of what I've done for myself and some of the philosophy I'm trying to bring forward and, and share mm -hmm. to the extent that that I'm actually going through their certification process with Mark Devine and his team to be cool. Uh, so currently I'm a coach in training, but uh, hopefully to achieve being a certified unbeatable mind coach so that I can I can package some of some of his techniques. Uh, some of his methodology, some of his, really what, what he, uh, he and his coaches describe that they do. And, and you said, you know, you don't agree with all of it or maybe how some of it's packaged, but mm -hmm. uh, I would, I would say what they do is, is try to gather together what they would call best practices in human development from mm -hmm. across the world, whether it's, it's an Eastern philosophy or a Western or a modern right. or a historical. So I think there, there are pieces of it. That, that work or resonate differently with different people. But it's, it's been valuable enough for me that I originally approached it from the perspective of going through their coaching certification to learn it at a deeper level for myself and for my son. But in, in going through that, part of what we have to do is coach others. So we call mm -hmm. it a um, sort of a pilot client or a volunteer coaching client uh, to practice the, the coaching techniques. And it affected me in ways I, I had no idea. So coaching somebody else through a lot of the things I've been coaching myself through has been such an amazing and humbling mm. and powerful process. I mean, I hope I'm making 
some impact for, for those individuals, but it's, it's been so incredible for me and so fulfilling and so much fun to do that, that I, I want, I want to continue doing that. So, uh, yeah, coming down, coming down the road here, you know, we got the podcast now and the website, which is somewhat static, but I, I did start a, a, a private Facebook group that I'm starting to bring some of this stuff into and maybe, you know, light the fire a little bit. Uh, I, I've got a, uh, a four week coaching course that I'm, I'm sort of putting together as I get certified in the actual coaching, then whether it's, uh, some of my own philosophy or through the unbeatable mind, uh, coaching that, that will be something I can, I can offer on a, you know, on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And then, um, yeah, down the road, there's, there's still some, some more fun stuff I've got, I've got planned around the whole, around the whole, um, uh, man of mastery and mastery mindset sort of sort of philosophy. Um, I don't want to talk about too much of it, but, but certainly uh, I'll throw this one out there. Always on the radar has been, has been a book or, or maybe a series of books. So that's cool. something I've, I've started working on uh, here recently for, for 2020. You ask about BHAGs, I'll, I'll throw mm -hmm. that out there. Try to get the first book out in, uh, in 2020 as well. So lots of stuff happening. Um, I mean, really the, the best thing to do if, if, uh, I think we've got a, probably a really good cross pollination of, of audience. And so if people are interested and not yet familiar and, and want to learn more is, uh, you know, either jump on Facebook or Instagram, which, uh, would be at the man of mastery or uh, hit the website, man of mastery.com and feel free to shoot me an email, shoot me a message, shoot me a comment on any of those platforms and, Love to hear from people. I always like the feedback, uh, questions, anything I can help with, anything I can be of, uh, of service to either listeners or to you, Chad, as you launch. I'm happy to help. Thanks, brother. I really appreciate that. Yeah, and you guys want to go out and check out all of Michael's uh, stuff, his website, his podcast, his stuff is great. And just uh, the, the pool of people you're having conversations with is outstanding and the things to, to be learned and applied through it is fantastic too. So thanks for all your work and thanks for this time. I really appreciate uh, you sitting down with, uh, with me and the rest of our audience and distilling some of this information so we can all become better men. No, I really appreciate that Chad. It's, it's really a pleasure, honor to speak to you as, as you start getting launched here. And uh, now I've just been, I've been so fortunate with, with guys like yourself and, and others that I've had a chance to talk to through, through this forum. It's, it's an amazing journey. I know you're going to love it. And, um, and I guess I, I would ask the same of you, you know, do you want to spend a couple minutes previewing what you've got coming up and where the best places are to find it? Yeah, absolutely. So the new kind of man podcast will, it's uh, currently available on iTunes and Spotify and other places that people get podcasts. It's generally everywhere. And so far, all there is is just a pilot episode. And I will be dropping uh, a few more episodes as an early Christmas present for all of you nice. uh, on December 16th. So this may be one of the ones that, that drops then, but uh, just in case you air yours earlier. So yeah, December 16th, I'm going to uh, drop a few more. I've already got some, some on deck and ready to go. So had some great conversations, just ready to get that information out and just a pool of different people. Uh, some very like-minded, some not, which is great. That means just another opportunity to grow. They can go to be a new man.com. That's my website and kind of see what I'm about, get the inner workings of me personally, some things I didn't share today you kind of get the backstory of that. And some of my blogs and writings are there too. Uh, and then I'm more regular on Instagram at, at a new kind of man and DM me. If you have a question, uh, you know, just want to have a conversation. I'm up, you know, I'm up for that. I'm open for that. And, uh, and I'm not just going to shun you because you ask a question that I don't know the answer to. So if I don't know the answer, I'll either find it or tell you, I don't know the answer. So I'm not going to bluff my way through it. So, uh, jump in there. I'm willing to help anyone that I can, any way that I can. Well, thanks for that, Chad. Yeah, I, I definitely follow your stuff on Instagram. There's, there's some great stuff out there. I'm super psyched about the, the podcast starting to, to drop and I'm, I'm humbled and honored to, to be an early guest in that. I really appreciate you doing the, this collaboration, taking the time for it. 
Yeah, I, I feel like I did most of the talking, so definitely would, would love to do it again soon and uh, yeah. spend a little bit more time on, on your philosophy and some of what you've learned and what you can share. Cool. Yeah, I'd love that. And uh, let's set it up. We'll do it in the future. Perfect. Well, thanks again, Chad. Have, have a great day. Yeah. Thank you too, brother. Bye-bye. Thank you again to Chad for facilitating that conversation and sharing more about his four pillars of intellectual, physical, spiritual, and relational growth. You can find links to Chad, his website, and his podcast at manofmastery.com slash 035. Manofmastery.com slash 035 for all the show notes and links from this episode. Also out there on the site, sign up for our weekly email so you don't miss a single episode or other things going on like the discount to Relentless MV. Additional to the email newsletter, hopefully by now you are subscribed to the podcast and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. If you're new and haven't done that yet, please do so. Go out to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, leave a rating. Hopefully we've earned a five-star rating and would love to hear a written review if you take a moment to do that as well, please. Wherever you choose to connect with us, I'd love to hear about your BHAGs, your big scary goals that you're setting out for 2020. Now, hopefully by the time you've heard this, you've had a very, very Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays. Rest, recharge, stay active, active in the body, quiet in the mind. That's it for this week. Start now for 2020. Take daily simple actions and carry that momentum right across that January 1 threshold and beyond. 